All right, a short pre-lab lecture on the solid liquid equilibrium phase equilibrium lab. We've got two stations here. You can ask your instructor whether you should be using both because um, depending on how many people there are in your group or just one. There will be some days when both are being used by two different groups, but maybe there is a week where you, one group could use both and get lots of data. The two compounds are starting out in their solid form, so the object of this experiment is to heat up a mixture of the two solids beyond their melting point, then turn the heat source off and record the temperature as the thing cools and collect what's called a cooling curve. So the two, the humid is kind of loud here, the two solids you're using are naphthalene and biphenyl. So there they are. Uh, the naphthalene especially is quite volatile as a solid. It's the stuff that mothballs are made out of, if you're familiar with that awful smell. So um, just be careful when you're in the balance room and going back and forth to the balance room to keep things covered so nobody gets a headache. The test tubes are right here. They already, should already be here and clean for you. And into a single test tube you will uh, measure out a, uh, a mixture. So you can check your lab manual. I'm not sure if it tells you exactly how much of each compound to add to the test tube. Um, but what's important is that the total mass for each one of your samples is five grams. So you can decide perhaps what mass of biphenyl and what mass of naphthalene will go together to make a total mass of five grams. And um, I think probably fill up to about here on your test tube, but I'm guessing. These are the temperature probes because we're measuring the temperature of the system as it cools down. So let's say, for example, we'll use number four here. So take out the temperature probe. The only thing that's left here is a little sample holder. So this is not the test tube that you're going to put your solids in. Oh, pardon me. Yes, it is. <laughs> Let me restate that. Sorry. Seems like this was already set up for a sample. So each one of these one, two, three, four positions already has a test tube in place. So this test tube here, don't pull it out. And you'll see it just contains a little piece of rubber at the bottom. And that's so that this, the test tube, the smaller test tube that has your sample in it, goes inside. And so it's a little bit of an insulating barrier here between your sample and what will be the hot water. And down here, it's sitting on the rubber. Okay. So this test tube has your five grams of mixture. Put it in, add your temperature probe, like so, and you're ready to collect the temperature. The water level on this beaker is low at the moment, so make sure when you come in that this water level is not above the lid, but close to it, maybe five milliliters below, and um, make sure that it is stirring. So I'll plug in at the moment. Make sure it's stirring not too fast, because there's four liters of water here that we're going to bring up to about 85 degrees, so we want it controlled. Turn on the heat if it's not on for you already, and get that water heating. It takes a long time for four liters of water to get to 85 degrees Celsius, so make sure that's turned on when you get in there. While that's heating up, and if you're using both, do both. While those baths are heating up, you can take your sample test tubes, go to the balance room, and get all of these things measured and labeled. When you come back, make sure you know which sample is in one, two, three, four on the left, and if you're using both, one, two, three, four on the right. All of these temperature probes are going to be plugged into a little mini computer called the LabQuest. Okay, we're just dangling here at the moment. I want you to be very careful about a few things. Um, because this is a hot plate, these um, water tubes and the electrical wires must not come into contact with the hot plate or the hot beaker itself. So we'll remind the TAs of that, but also make sure that you're aware of it as well. So 
a lot of this is a hurry up and wait experiment, as they say, but it really needs your attention the whole time. Keep an eye on it. So once your samples are all in the um, four liter, four liters of water, and the water is heated up to say 85 degrees, all of your mixtures should be one phase. They should all be melted. And so everything is above their melting temperature, okay? And you'll just go around and make sure that everything is clear. You'll call the TA over or the instructor over at that point and say, I want to stop heating. So we'll turn off the heater, but we keep the stirrer going at a nice, slow, rotating speed. And what we do is we turn on, um, we'll turn on the water to just a trickle, okay? And that cold water is going to go into your exchanger coil and help to cool down the four liters of water a little bit faster than it would if we just simply turn the heat off and left it because we want to make sure that you're done um, in reasonable time. Record, start your recording at that point once everything is, is melted. Start your lab quest and record your cooling curves um, for your samples. And if you have access to the digital camera, then it would be a great idea to take a picture of your sample when it's completely melted and when it starts to crystallize. And I'm gonna let you uh, discover what that looks like in this world surprise. <laughs> okay, so keep those wires and water tubes away from the hot plate and make sure that water initially does not heat up to boiling because the lid is on. Okay, have fun.